everyone, it's Ross, and in uh, today's video, we're going to be talking about the fig varieties that I'm most looking forward to this upcoming season in 2019. Um, before we get into that, I just want to mention that we have a website now. Um, it has been updated. We had to switch domains, switch hosts, so you know things got a little messy there, but it is rossratty.wixlate.com slash blog. I'd recommend you guys follow me here. Check out the blog. Uh, we've already got four different posts here on the blog. Real interesting, much longer form content that's different than the videos and different from other uh, forms of social media that we're on like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, we also have a consulting page for anyone who needs any consulting work out there that's in the area. Um, I've already done my first consulting job. Woohoo, right? Um, <laughs> I've pretty much been able to cons call myself a consultant now, which is really, really cool. Um, also, you know, um, we did do a little bit of an announcement video. Maybe that did or didn't come out yet, but essentially, I'm trying to help alleviate the work on the YouTube channel and kind of redirect a lot of the questions that I get back to the YouTube video that the questions pertain to. A lot of you guys love to ask me questions, and I love answering the questions for you. Um, I don't mind it. In fact, I think it's great uh, to help other people accomplish a similar goal to my own. But if everybody's asking me questions through email, Facebook, even Instagram now, um, it really is a, a bit of a work that all these questions are all over in different places. Plus, um, there's just a lot of them, right? And if you put them on the video that it pertains to, it helps out my videos. It helps out my channel. It helps out other people like yourselves that are like-minded and trying to find similar content. So. By you guys putting them through email, I'm not getting any kind of gain out of that whatsoever. Um, and I would just like to try to rebuild the community on YouTube and keep it on YouTube rather than building it on Facebook or Instagram or even through my email. It just doesn't really help me out. So um, let's get on to the video now. And I think the, the most interesting varieties that I'm looking for are really varieties that I am... Um, that are going to do well in my climate and we talk a lot about location 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 we talk a lot about you know varieties of figs just do so well in different climates that it's hard to really even give good recommendations in other places around the country or even around the world um, but for me these are the ones that I'm looking forward to the most if you want to see most of the varieties that I'm going to be grafting this year um, some of them are not listed here it's really difficult to just put together a list of varieties that are going to be brand new because um, I think there's just so many of them. In fact, there is. There's a lot of new ones this year. Every year it seems like there's just so many new ones. Um, but pretty soon we're actually getting to the point where we're getting rid of more than we are gaining. So at least we're, <laughs> we're making progress in that direction. But um, essentially this year to put together a whole list of them, I think is uh, quite difficult not and to be honest with you I don't want to even show you guys the entire list but here are some of them that I am going to be grafting this year and this is in the the uh, the spreadsheet down in the description below you just go to the to do sheet here in the spreadsheet I got a whole bunch of stuff I need to do right I gotta put a whole bunch of trees in the ground we're probably gonna put some around 40 of them in the ground this year um, I've got to up pot some things I gotta put things together kind of conserve as much space as I can, uh, change some pots, you know, um, these are some root stocks that I've had and I'm going to let them grow um, to try to reclaim that variety. Also, I'm trying to keep track of how many pots I'm getting rid of. These are trees that I'm getting rid of in terms of pots and that will free up some space on the patio and in storage. You know, there's a whole lot of things going on here that I'm trying to keep track of. This is certainly not accurate. Um, not every variety that I'm grafting is in this this list here, but it, it's pretty close. Um, I'm trying to get more of them in this list, but uh, there's some that I just won't know that I even have until we get to grafting in the spring. Uh, but these are a lot of the new ones that I'm adding this year. Um, really excited for quite a bit of these for various different reasons I really tried to limit myself this year to varieties I thought would absolutely do well that have been proven to be common or 
are so good or look to be so good that I would have to be crazy to pass them up. Um, you know, things that I think may be a bit late in the season, but they should be rain resistant or hopefully rain resistant. Um, and they should be tasty or maybe they fill a different flavor category, etc. cetera. Uh, but I think the ones that I'm about to mention to you guys are above the rest. And these are the ones that maybe I've had in previous seasons, but haven't really gotten a great handle on them. Uh, the first one here is Campanieri. And this is a variety um, found in France. And you can go here and read all about it. This website's going to know a lot more than, um, than I know about it. But this is a beautiful, beautiful fig. A very tasty fig, without a doubt. Um, this certainly has some really great qualities to it. You can see here some that have dried on the tree. That's really great for things like rain resistance you know I'm not seeing any signs of real mold I'm not seeing any signs of splitting um, and, and there's a lot of photos here of these figs you can see that it's got a great looking interior it's got the honey in there it's a good size right it's not the largest fig but it looks very productive uh, and the size to me is quite important I really am looking for smaller figs that are more rain resistant um, that can hold up to the weather here that hopefully also have thinner skin and this one certainly looks like it has a thin a thin skin and a, a pretty small synconium also the Aikenese don't look too big right but there does look like there's many of them um, so maybe not the most pleasurable texture but I'm certainly would agree that this one is quite tasty you can read all about it here it's very very hardy um, one, maybe one of the most hardiest varieties in existence we're gonna plant I'm going to aim to try to plant as many of these as I can. Uh, of, among the 40 trees that I'll plant this year, um, I'm going to put maybe like at least three of these in the ground uh, with the intention to get these to be really large trees. This variety has survived negative 20 degrees Celsius, which is negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit, which is actually incredible. Um, only really hardy Chicago so far in my area has really proven itself to survive super cold temperatures. Uh, there are some other ones out there like Dalmaty, Brunswick, maybe some of the Celestes, right? Like uh, Blue Celeste or Black Celeste have probably survived really cold temperatures. Um, you know, there's some definitely really hardy ones out there, but this is among the hardiest. You know, uh, English Brown Turkey is another one. You know, this one maybe just a cut above the rest and the mother tree is in France that's 140 years old that's really special in itself an old variety that has adapted over the years that has withstood 140 years worth of weather I mean that is a special special tree and the fact that Thierry the guy the owner here at uh, Figues de Monde Figs of the World that he has found this variety in France and is um it's now actually in the United States that I was able to get a hold of it is incredible um, it's also extremely early and I that whole combination it's early it's rain resistant it's hardy it's very tasty those four things right there is the perfect fig for my climate so uh, this one I'm probably the most excited about out of all of them um, the next one I'm really excited about is actually from Thierry as as well um, he was the one that was able to get this variety from the conservatory in France of I don't even know how to pronounce it but this is from a conservatory uh, even though Thierry is working to help preserve a lot of varieties in France and even from all over the world um, this is there is a conservatory in France that preserves a whole lot of French varieties. And this is one of them from that collection. And um, this is Aishia Black. So Aishia Black, the one that we know of the most is from UC Davis. That is from the fig repository here in the United States, UC Davis, right? University of California, Davis. So they're housing a whole bunch of varieties there for us as Americans in the United States. But the variety and most of the varieties that have been housed at UC Davis at one time were just very heavily infested with fig mosaic virus 
Um, they didn't really take good care of their trees and they didn't really take good measures to stop the spread of the disease. And certain varieties got more of the virus. Other varieties took it harder than others. And Aishia Black was one that really took it hard. And Aishia Black without a doubt, is one of the best varieties, tasty varieties, in existence. Um, I even have some from UC Davis that I got as very small trees that I'm really hoping will make it through the, the winter this year and will grow and turn into productive trees for me eventually. But they are from the UC Davis collection. They are in, infested with fig mosaic virus. And that is the biggest problem with this variety is that they are infested with the virus quite heavily. Um, a lot of them now at this point either spawn from two different collectors, either from Herman in New Jersey, which he was able to get a healthier uh, sucker from the base of his tree. And then he turned that into a healthier strain that is actually now healthier from the original UC Davis stock. Uh, there's also a guy, New England Gardener, believe it or not. Maybe some of you guys have watched his YouTube channel. He has a healthy strain that's also from UC Davis. So between the two of them, most of them now have been passed along from those two guys um, and now have made their way throughout most of the United States. And it just seems like to me that, yes, it's a wonderful fig. I'm so happy to have it. I want many copies of this one because it's it really is mid-season. I know some people have disagreed with that, but I've heard from many uh, many collectors with this variety that have had it for years now tell me that it is mid-season. Maybe it's on the later side of mid-season. Who knows? I know this one is a, a bit late in Seattle, so you know it's not going to be something that is going to perform well in maybe England or or Seattle, like a really cool summer climate, but. A climate like mine with a warm summer, this should certainly be uh, a mid-season variety. Also, it's extremely tasty, right? Uh, I've also heard reports that it's not rain resistant. I've heard reports that it is rain resistant. Um, and overall, if you feed it well, it will eventually beat the disease. It will overcome the disease, the virus, and you won't really have to worry about fig mosaic virus. But it is the most probably infected variety that I know of that's even worth considering growing. So uh, for me, it was really important to find one, if it existed, to find one that was maybe fig mosaic virus free or has a lot less of the virus within it. And that's where this one comes in, from the conservatory in France they have an Aishia Black from that conservatory that we're hoping is the same thing as the UC Davis version. It may not be, but uh, it, it certainly sounds like the same variety. It certainly looks like the same variety. Um, all indications are leading that it is the same variety, but it's going to be a lot healthier, which uh, is kind of what Herman II, the guy in New Jersey, has been kind of wanting for years. Um, even way back in 2003, when I think he was first growing this this variety from UC Davis, he was really trying to find one from Europe that made its way into America that was healthy. Um, and this may be the answer. So I'm really, really excited. And I'm, I'm trying to make many copies of this one as well, as quickly as I can. I'm going to put one in the ground if everything goes well um, and see how well this one does in the ground. Um, I know it's relatively hardy, uh, maybe not the hardiest variety like Campaneri, but it should be rain resistant and it should be early enough to ripen in our climate. So we'll see if this one's healthy enough, it's the same thing. Uh, worst case scenario is that it turns out to be another Violette de Bordeaux type, which is not the end of the world because Violette de Bordeaux is such a great, great fig. So we'll see what happens with this one. I'm crossing my fingers, but no promises can be made as of yet. Another variety here is called Col Noir. It's called Black Ass. I guess it's the literal translation. Translation. What a horrible name. I'm not going to lie. What a real horrible name. Um, this one also originates and is now in the United States from Thierry's collection 
in France. So a lot of these these varieties from France are making their way into the United States uh, through various different people that, believe it or not, are importing them. Um, what's awesome here about this particular one, I guess I should say the reason why it's called black ass is that it really does look like it has a black bottom to it. So as the fig progresses in ripeness, that's kind of what naturally happens to it. Um, it's a very weird process, but what's really cool about this one is that this is a bit of a, um, a mid-season variety. Uh, and what's really special about it is that of all the figs in Thierry's collection, this one seems to be one of the most, if not the most, rain-resistant fig in his collection. Um, this is really what I look for in my climate. Um, it can dry in his climate. His climate certainly is no uh, is not dry. He has pretty wet uh, falls. Um, you know, I think most of his spring and most of his summer is dry, right? So he's able to get dry figs that are earlier in the season. But this one um, is certainly going to get hit with uh, excess humidity, rain late in the season, and it does not ferment. Um, in fact, it's he says here that the tail is small but strong, and the figs can dry on the tree easily, taking on a cork tint, indicating a transformation into a dried fig. The harvest is easy, and one can choose the desired stage of maturity because this fig falls with difficulty, so it stays attached to the tree very well. That's a very important characteristic for something that will be able to dry on the tree. And it does not ferment in case of excess humidity. It is one of the rare figs that resists well to fall rains. That's bingo. Bingo, bingo, bingo. This is a perfect, perfect, perfect fig. It's mid-season, and even though it's mid-season, that fall rain that I'm going to get late in the season, this one should be able to hold up to it. Not only that, but just take a look. Take a look at that. <laughs> take a look at that, guys. Whew. That looks like the interior of an Ishia Black. That's how dark that is. All right, some other ones here that I'm really excited for is Pastelliere. A lot of you guys know that I love this fig. Um, I have got to try this, but I haven't really gotten a, ch a chance to try many of them of good quality. So we'll, we'll see what happens to my in-ground tree this year. I think it's actually pulling through the winter time uh, with minimal damage. We'll see if it's able to um, have a similar, a better characteristic with hardiness next year because it is supposed to be a hardy variety. Um, it is supposed to be a very slow growing variety, which is great because I want slower growing varieties in the ground. Um, that way the, the wood will harden up in time and I won't have a problem with a late, uh, a really early frost sometime in like late November that comes in and just destroys a lot and damages a lot of the fig wood that isn't hardened up in time. So it's a really important characteristic that when growing figs here in my climate, we need to have figs that will really not grow very well or very quickly. Uh, and, and in fact, we don't want figs to really be planted in fertile soils. We want to select a, a, a site that actually has really poor quality soil because the tree won't really grow that quickly. Hopefully it's more well draining um, and that way that excess water will go away. Again, we're really trying to slow down the growth um, and Pastelieri naturally does that. So really, really cool that this, and this variety is really tasty by the way. You just look at that. That's incredible. Um, what I will say though, it's a small fig and it does have problems in rain. It does tend to split. But what's nice about this one is that this is like the first fig of the year. This ripens right alongside Rondé Bordeaux. Um, ripens even before Hardy Chicago. Will probably ripen at the same time um, as Campanieri. Um, so this one, even though it's it's not really the greatest with rain, it's not really going to matter because it ripens sometime in, in early August, maybe even late July, and because of that we're not really going to have a whole lot of rain at that period of time. And if we do, the temperatures are warm enough to make it really not that matter or not really matter that much. Um, when the temperatures really cool down 
and then it starts to rain, that's when we really run into trouble. So for me, um, this one's a no-brainer. It's early, it's very tasty, it's hearty. Um, you know, you, you can't really lose with this one. Really excited to try the fruit um, and get a better handle on the variety. Uh, some other ones here that I'm really excited about. I mean, there's really just an endless list. If you go into this this list that I was talking about, there's so many varieties in here that I'm looking forward to that I can't really express how much I'm looking forward to them. I can't I can't do all of them. You know, um, some of them in here that I've figured out are some of the earlier varieties in Italy, which are Angiarolo, uh, Nutriola di Elba. San Baggio, Vertolino, Pastelliere, you know, and here's some of the photos from Paolo Bologna's collection in Italy. This is Angiarolo. Uh, I believe this is Nucciolo de Elba. This is the San Baggio, if I'm not mistaken. This is Vertolino. Uh, maybe this, this may be Paradiso. This is Pastelliere, and so on. Um, the one that I think I'm the most interested in, even though all of them, Vertolino's really uh, super early. Um, Nucciola de Elba looks like an incredible tasty variety. But I think the one that I'm most interested in is San Baggio. And this one's really rare, exceptionally rare. Um, really excited to try this again. This one has like a really dark red interior with this yellow skin. That's really. Um, really not a common combination that you see. Usually it's like a green skin with a dark red interior or a black skin or a purple skin with a dark red interior. It's unusual to find one that's as yellow as this with that dark red interior. Um, also it's a really interesting fig. It's quite acidic. It's got a nice bite to it. So I've been told, so I've been told, excuse me guys, I don't think it's very hardy. Even though I'm going to put one of these in the ground, that's my plan. It's not very hardy, um, but it is about mid-season, which is really nice. And I think the rain resistance is pretty good. So we're hoping to see if this one, even though it's mid-season, it's not really going to be affected too much by the rain. But we're hoping that this one is rain resistant in the event that um, it is ripening a bit too late or... Um, we get a lot of rains during the time this one ripens. So, uh, yeah, these are really the, the varieties that I'm most looking forward to, guys. I hope this one was a bit informative. Um, I know this one may be hyping, hyping things up a bit, but we still have a long way to go before we can really say great things about these varieties. Um, you know, a lot of these are unproven in my climate, as an example. However, Pastelliere is certainly proven in many climates. Uh, this one's grown all throughout the world. It's very common. This one does exceptional in a huge variety of climates. Um, and honestly, I'm, I, I know that this one's going to do well here in my climate. So, um, all right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this one. Uh, we'll catch you for tomorrow's video. All right. Hope to see you guys outside pretty soon. Uh, if you guys haven't already, like this video, subscribe, right? Comment down below if you guys have some questions regarding these varieties, uh, or want to know maybe some other ones that I'm I'm interested in. Um, you know, it really helps out the videos. Also, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Check out the website, right? No big deal. All right, guys, take care, and I'll catch you all tomorrow. Like I said, all right. Cheers.